you keep telling people that this opportunity is coming, basically they're changing all the residential zones from R1, R2, R3. We're going to go to an NL1, an NL2, and an NL3. They're erasing everything that was there before and the densities and the opportunities we're gonna go over and they are looking good. So what they're doing is they're targeting the missing middle. Originally, if you look over here, the detached homes, you could have almost anywhere in Barrie, and then you had an urban growth center, which is your downtown core, where they wanted high density, you know, you've seen the high rise towers in our areas, and then you'd see the odd duplex, triplex zoned lands. Uh, the new zoning bylaw is opening up the doors big time for this. So NL1, so this is pretty well the lowest, the worst case scenario that you're allowed to do in any lot in Barrie once this passes. With this new NL1 zoning, you can have detached homes, semi-detached homes, townhouses. So if you've got a 60, 50 foot lot, something like that, 80 foot lot, the land your house is sitting on once this passes is going to be worth more than your current value of your land and your house together. You're going to be able to sever 20 foot, 60 foot lots into three townhouse lots, two 24 foot semi lots. These new frontages and minimum densities are crazy. And also in addition to that, Bill 23 allowed for up to three units per lot as long as you can do the parking for it as well. So you can just imagine the opportunities this is going to create. And This is the worst case scenario. Welcome back to the Canadian Real Estate Channel. I'm your host, Adam J.D. Martin. And today I'm sitting here with Colby Marshall from the Marshall team. And we just got a wicked market update from Colby. So I wanted to dive in and see a little bit more about what we can understand about the stats we just heard about in our market update here, right from Colby himself. We're talking about Simcoe County. Colby, that was hey. quite the update, man. Yeah, thanks for having us again. Happy New Year to everybody. Uh, super excited to be here. Uh, I just wanted to go into the numbers a bit more that uh, you know we had our little market update for. Again, this is all the encompassing Simcoe County. So there's uh, about seven different municipalities in Simcoe County. This is the broad big view. Uh, we're gonna target three specific growth areas that we like to target and uh, dive a little deeper into that. These are the quick stats for the end of the year for December for Simcoe County. So for all of Simcoe County, we had 1,117 active listings, which is, seems to be growing, which is pretty a good amount for um, you know, December, which is usually pretty slow for real estate. The median sale price has went down to $742,000, which is crazy. Obviously, COVID had that up a lot higher a couple, well, six to eight months ago. Months of inventory, we got 6.8 months of inventory. You know, a, a good, perfect market. We want to see the come that come down to around three or four months. Days on market, we're about 44 days on market. Again, that's across all of Simcoe County. In our, some of our growth areas, it gets a lot tighter. But what we want to see is it come down to closer to a 30. But with the big things coming around with the spring market, I think it's going to drop below 30, which will have a lot of things moving. Sale to list ratio, we're at 96.7%. That's uh, actually come up a little bit in the last little while. So, you know, we're closing the gap on what people are listing their house for to what they're selling. So uh, let's dive into a bit more of the growth areas. It's a more in-depth look into uh, what we're looking for here. So average sale price of detached homes in Barrie are the first thing that I want to talk to you guys about. We're just going to click to the, so everyone can see the graph a bit better here. So usually when we're doing our charts, we had a 12 month chart and you can kind of start to see the ups and downs of the market over the year, but I didn't think it really did things justice. So I kicked her out to uh, January, 2022. And uh, this is basically the high watermark of pricing for, from COVID. So, everything from here this is the peak right here you can see as soon as interest rates went up everything started going down price point wise affordability went down now this spot right here is a very important spot to uh, look at because right here is where the rates held last time and they stopped putting interest rates up and everyone thought it was the bottom it was right around this time and look at what happened to prices prices started to climb and now we're getting into a spot right now, which is about the same time as last year. And uh, they're talking about putting interest rates down, not just a hold, but bringing them down. So what do you think is gonna happen to prices in our area? 
we're, I think we're going to supersede these three bars here and become somewhere in between the two is uh, what I'm seeing in the spring market here. We already can feel it in the air. Spring's coming, and it's going to be a good one, especially if uh, we get a quick decrease in interest rates. Yeah, I mean, that that seems like a fairly, like that does not seem out of reach, right? Like at the very minimum, I would expect if the rates hold or, or even go down, you would stay at that local high where the last rate hold was. But more than likely, if it goes down, you could expect it to actually uh, exceed that, which I think is totally reasonable given the, you know, given the environment today. Yeah, and our, some of our mortgage brokers that we work with, they're going to see, you know, 10 to 15% in uh, buying power back into buyers laps if interest rates start to go down you know up to one percent this year so that's going to go reflect right in the prices of real estate as well so we're, we're excited to get some momentum going the other way and uh the perfect burr might be coming back yeah that sounds so, good that's music <laughs> to our ears here yeah absolutely so let's uh get into a uh, number of active listings again it's at a low you can see that um january of uh 2022 when we we're at the peak of covid they were at a very low rate so we had competing offers craziness uh you can see here again this is where the rates held it was at a pretty good low as well and now we're in a similar space and you can see how things uh have went that way with the number of active listings but i think it's going to go the opposite way and actually decrease and prices are going to go up the other way so we're really excited to see what's going to happen in the spring market I think it's going to be an early one and she's going to be pretty robust. Yeah, it's, it is fascinating too to have the rate change right at this point in the seasonality as well because we'll naturally expect some more houses to sort of come up in the spring market and, and more activity just in general, right? Like there's generally just more volume, more activity, more, ha more houses changing hands. So it's Absolutely. going to be pretty exciting. That could cause like sort of a chain reaction of, of pricing. It's a lot more enjoyable moving in the spring and the summer than the winter. <laughs> All right, so uh, average sale prices of detached homes in Aurelia. We'll go back to the chart here. Uh, January 2022, we had our peak detached home values break over 800,000. Slumped down as interest rates went up, and now they there was a hold around this area. And then prices came up a little bit, and now they've come back down. But whispers again of interest rates actually coming down, which is going to again break through this barrier and go up somewhere in between here and i think prices are going to go up as fast as they came down as, as soon as the media starts pumping these interest rate drops people catch on it's going to be a feeding frenzy number of active listings again it just is a mirror image of the pricing you can see here where there was an all-time low and then as uh, interest rates went up uh people weren't selling their houses because they couldn't afford to move here's your rate hold again here and then we're coming back up again and then i think it's going to come down and prices are just going to go crazy there's going to be a lot of people that can't move but a lot of people are getting buying power back so i think a lot of uh, the inventory is going to get chewed up and prices are going to go through the roof we still have a housing crisis uh, builders haven't been building for the last 18 months due to interest rates so when the buying power does come back to the people it's going to go through the roof yeah, and I think that's something too, like we, we love to talk about that here. Like it, it didn't get easier to build houses anytime in the recent past, right? No. Like there, there's some regulations that have kind of been moving, but like at the same time, like we're just not building enough and we continue to bring people into the country and there continues to be more people coming into the market. So it's oh, just yeah. the demand is there, right? So, mm -hmm. I, I, you know, I think it's always worth highlighting, like we're not building faster than we ever have. It just oh. isn't happening. Most builders in our area stopped for the last 18 That's months. Right. All the new build, all the new home sites, they've stopped because no one was buying homes. So why are they going to build product that they can't sell? And they're paying interest on these crazy rates. Yep. So we've actually had a, no inventory coming on from a new build perspective. People trying to sell their existing built inventory that people are walking away from. So there's been no new units built. And we brought in how many immigrants and refugees yep. and just population growth as a whole. Like, it's going to be worse. When the buying power gets back, the housing crisis is going to be worse. And you need to get on board to find the opportunity so you don't get left behind. Well, and it's worth mentioning too, right? Like Simcoe County, for those that are watching the channel for the first time and, and jumped in because they're interested in just learning more about it. Like, this is right beside Toronto. 
guys. It's like an hour and a bit to get to Toronto. And so when you see immigration numbers like that, where do they go? Well, they're going to Vancouver. They're going to Toronto. And where do they go after they land in Toronto? Well, they find the neighboring communities, right? Which can be Simcoe County. Like we have a lot of, uh, a lot of avenues to getting towards um, this mm-hmm. side of the of the county, and so Toronto's right there. Collingwood's had a building moratorium forever yeah. um, because of water issues, like water mm-hmm. supply issues, which is kind of cute with George and Bay being right there. But you know, none of that helps the the housing supply, right? Yeah. So to Colby's point, like as we continue to get more buying power, and there's there's more people chasing the same the same or less amount of goods. Mm-hmm. Uh, what happens to price? Like it's basic yeah. economics, guys. It goes. And at the end of the day, it's quicker to drive from Barrie to Toronto than it is to go from one side of Toronto to the other. Believe it or not. Yeah, that's actually, cool. you know what? That's a that's a fair point that I never thought of like that. That's real. That's actually fascinating. Yeah, yeah. About forty five minutes, fifty minutes, and. Good luck driving across Toronto. It takes a little, long time for that. And you can't even, you can't even get off the Gardner in fifty minutes. <laughs> <laughs> uh, next chart I want to get into is uh, the new area that we're targeting with Saga Beach. So with Saga Beach is just on the other side of Collingwood. It is kind of the bedroom community for Collingwood, but we also do have a lot of industry and things in this area. We have had a huge success with the building department. We're very excited to be working there. We're getting permits in ten to 14 days, three weeks tops. Um, Building officials and everything have been super great with our intensifications. We're doing multifamily stuff out there and we're very happy to be out there. Things are going so smoothly, very efficiently. And uh, there's a lot of estate style homes, like 100 by 200 foot lots that we're targeting. These things were like 1.2 million. Now they're like $750,000 that we're converting into beautiful triplexes like no parking issues, no space issues. And there's such a need for higher end um, rental units in those areas because you've got semi-retired people looking, retirees, people working in Collingwood, people working in Barrie, the affordabilities in this area. And uh, we're just loving working out there. So I really want to touch on some of the stats for Wasaga Beach. Again, uh, here's your sale, sale prices. COVID times, here was the peak. Some of the houses that we're looking at now were around million, million plus. Uh, the state style and a state style subdivisions that we're converting currently. Last one we just picked up was 725,000, but you can see the big decrease here. It was one of the biggest decreases we've seen out of the three areas that we're talking about. Here was where the uh, interest rates held, slight increase, and then uh, there was no further increases, so it's kind of held true. And then now people are saying, uh, you know, we're going to see the decrease in interest rates. So you can see how things are going to equal out that way, similar to the other two areas. And then the number of active listings, again, a complete mirror. You can see that um, when everyone was leaving the city in, you know, the height of COVID, there was almost no listings on the market in this area because when you're moving out to a Saga, you had the affordability, you had the space, there's the semi retire retiree lifestyle. Your stones throw to all these different industries. There's hospitals, everything there. So everyone was getting out of the city into Wasaga Beach. There's a huge, huge tourism area to this as well. And you can kind of see the active listings ebb and flow with the seasonality as well. But we're getting a lot of people moving there to live due to affordability. They just built a casino there. And it's not really affected by the Collingwood water line that uh, you guys said they have their own plant there as well. So yep. Uh, Great spot. We love working there. They're working with us. We love to see that. Some of the other municipalities are a bit tougher. Um, so it's easy to get your permits through, easy to start making money. And uh, yeah, we're like two weeks once we get submitted to permits. And we just love to see that efficiency. And uh, we'd love to do more business up there. So that's up your alley. Um, we got some people Airbnb and out units, long term rentals, everything that you can imagine we're doing out there. Give us a call if that's a, a spot you guys might want to be. Awesome. I think it's also got like the largest uh, freshwater beach like in the world too. Like it's kind of yeah, crazy. yeah, <laughs> like, yeah. It was it's Sega a pretty beach. sweet market. Yeah, no, absolutely. It's it's beautiful there, and uh, in the summer it's a great time. Bit slower life in in the winter, but again, calling with 10, 15 minute drive, and they got the ski yeah. hills and everything. The golf courses there, every amenity you can imagine, and it's like ten minute drive depending on where you're going. So, you know, you wouldn't be bored. That's for sure. Love it. So yeah, it looks like we're about to jump into bylaws. I know we've mentioned uh, these on other market updates, so I'm excited to hear sort of 
uh, what the updates have been here on like, you know, wh where's this headed? What are we going to see? Yeah, I know, you I know you mentioned some increased density in the in the short market update video. So I'm really excited to hear about this more. Yeah, I know City of Barrie is doing something they haven't done in almost 20 years. So a zoning bylaw, an official plan is a provincial is a sorry, a municipal document that dictates what you're allowed to build in each zone, what kind of built form they want to see, and basically lays out any kind of densities development and how they want it, where they want it, and how you have to do it. So this hasn't been updated in almost 20 years. So you can imagine the provincial policy at that time, they wanted smaller lots then, but your smaller lot was 50 by 150 feet. Now this whole new zoning bylaw is going to be intensifying to today's policy. So it's being updated for 20 years of housing crisis essentially. So these new densities and these new zonings that we're seeing and these new built forms we're still trying to wrap our head around we don't even know what they are yet they sound really cool but we don't know what we can do with them so we're really excited to finally wrap our head around it this is something that was come, supposed to come to fruition back in the fall apparently they kicked it up to the province for approval the province said no we need more density go back to the table so they have to take what they've already intensified and he put even more growth into this plan so we've been trying to learn as much as we can. We actually have the draft copy of the zoning bylaw. We have a draft copy of the zoning maps. So it's a treasure map of where these new densities are gonna be. So if any of this interests you, listen up and we'll, we'll educate you as best we can here. And this you can gold. see some of the opportunities. This is gold, this is absolute gold. Like the, he's literally telling you, Colby's telling you right now where you can invest and expect to see massive growth. Like when we see, in dense, when we see density increasing, we're going to see everything else that comes with that, right? More businesses, more schools, more services, more Absolutely. everything, yeah. right? So this is this is actually super exciting news, and I'm really excited to see what happens with Barry. I mean, Barry's been on fire for years, mm -hmm. um, and this is only going to throw gas on that. So I'm I'm definitely oh. excited about that. And this zoning map that we have literally will tell you where land is going to go up a couple hundred thousand dollars in value. Yeah once this passes and it has to pass mandated by the province it was supposed to happen in the fall and now they're making it even better for us so it's going to be coming up quickly we're hearing end of around springtime now but we already know roughly where they're going to be changing everything and it's just changing the whole landscape of barry and Amazing. everywhere you're going to be allowed to intensify into something bigger better more units and the density to help the housing crisis that's what they're doing this for so we we keep telling people that this opportunity is coming basically they're changing all the residential zones from R1, R2, R3, which were the old ones from 20 years ago, we're going to go to an NL1, an NL2, and an NL3. So these are going to be the new changes that are coming up. They're erasing everything that was there before. If you ever looked at a zoning map, they had little chunks here, little chunks there, and what you're allowed to do. Now they're going to be dropping it into three zones, and the densities and the opportunities we're going to go over, and they are looking good. So what they're doing is they're targeting the missing middle. Originally, if you look over here, the detached homes, you could have almost anywhere in Barrie. And then you had an urban growth center, which is your downtown core, where they wanted high density. You know, you see the high rise towers in our areas. And then you'd see the odd duplex, triplex zoned lands. Uh, the new zoning bylaw is opening up the doors big time for this. So let's see how they're targeting the missing middle. So NL1. So this is pretty well the lowest, the worst case scenario yeah, you're allowed to do in any lot in Barry once this passes. So currently in any lot in Barry, you can do a detached home and you can get three units in it is your worst case scenario. With this new NL1 zoning, you can have detached homes, semi-detached homes, townhouses. So if you've got a 60, 50 foot lot, something like that, 80 foot lot, the land your house is sitting on once this passes is going to be worth more than your current value of your land and your house together. You're going to be able to sever 20 foot, 60 foot lots into three townhouse lots, two 24 foot semi lots. These new frontages and minimum densities are crazy. And also, in addition to that, Bill 23 allowed for up to three units per lot as long as you can do the parking for it as well. So you can just imagine the opportunities this is going to create. And this is the worst case scenario. That's so crazy. And especially like, Given right now, like, again, we're, we are coming, we're very close to this rate announcement. So mm -hmm. things are going to change quickly. But like right now, houses are still kind of on sale when we look at the previous charts that we just covered. So it's like, 
damn it, the timing is so exciting for this type of stuff. Like once this plan comes out, you start severing lots, you start recovering capital very quickly, you can start seeing some velocity in your investment. And I think that that's a really exciting prospect for the people that are watching the channel right now who are like, they're, we're getting really trained at like having our capital stuck in these investments forever. Well, this is a way where you can get into properties and actually increase the velocity of your money by simply severing things off and adding value from that perspective. Like you don't need to, you don't need to do the work, right? Like that's what we're talking about right now. Mm -hmm. You can have the lot, sever the damn thing, and have yeah. somebody else do the work if you don't want to do that. Or you could take it all the way and add max value. There's so many different angles here that you can play. Absolutely. NL two. It's the next zoning that's going to be through Barry. This is where a lot of the opportunity is that we're going to be targeting. Uh, detached homes are allowed in it. Semi detached homes. They have cluster homes. It's a new built form we haven't done yet. We're not too familiar with, but we're looking into it. It seems kind of like little compounds. I don't know if it's gonna be catered towards seniors, maybe uh, affordable housing. We're, we're trying to wrap our head around it. We got row houses, back-to-back uh, -to -back townhouses, and also low-rise buildings. So we're allowed to go up to 10 units per lot in the low-rise building space in any NL2 zone. So this wasn't allowed anywhere almost in Barry, maybe 15% of it. And with Bill 23 coming in, we're allowed to create up to 10 units with no site plan approval. So that's some low hanging fruit here to do a lot of good missing middle multifamily buildings. So we're looking at our four to 10 unit space in these NL2 zones with that little low rise building availability. So if someone's looking to get into you know more apartment style, uh, more multifamily space, these NL2 zone could be a great option for you. And also, you know, if that isn't the way that works out for you, you can still fall back on your townhouses, your semi-detached and your detached homes. There's so many different exit strategies to be able to profit from this new zoning bylaw. You just got to give us a call. And we'll, we'll take you through everything. The next one is the NL3. So this is a zoning that is primarily put along busy streets. Arterial roads is what they're called. These areas that are zoned NL3 have a minimum of 10 units per lot. So now we just talked about what Build 23 did for 10 units and less. There's no site plan control. But this zoning is usually around busy streets. So I always reference Markham when I say this. You drive down the busy, uh, the main street of Markham, you see six-story buildings, eight-story buildings, main floor commercial. That's kind of what they want to see in the NL3 zone. So this is more of a land assembly play. You're getting over the 10 units. You're going to be going through site plan control. So you have to be more of a savvy de developer type person to be able to take on these projects. You're probably going to be doing a land assembly portion, but you can add value just by assembling the land, selling it to somebody else. So there's definitely opportunities in these spaces as well, but uh, maybe a bit more for the seasoned people for sure. Awesome. Yeah, I think we're going to have to get somebody in to talk about these cluster homes because it's not really talked about a lot in Ontario, but it's something that I think they do a little bit more in like Europe and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. um, and the kind of the idea is it's got like a shared party wall, um, shared roof, um, but you could think of it almost like a, a semi, but like four ways. Like if you looked at a square, it would be like a semi and a semi back to back sharing shared party walls. And you could do like a essentially a cube and have multiple dwellings but really cut down your costs, right? right? Because you get to like build one, essentially one giant square and then cut it into four. Uh, I'm sure there's other formats of it, but like that's the simplest example to explain to those watching okay. at home. Um, yeah, and like, it, it's just, it's a really cool way to increase density while decreasing cost at the same time. Um, so it kind of plays a little bit into the affordability piece and it also helps to increase supply. So I think that's an exciting uh, prospect as well for people looking into Barry because I haven't heard of a lot of other cities focusing on that yet, right? So yeah. here's an interesting opportunity you're hearing here first, uh, the Canadian Real Estate Channel from Colby Marshall team, like, hey, this is like an interesting opportunity for you guys to get more density on a smaller lot. Yeah. Oh, absolutely. Yeah, we're we're wrapping our head around that one still, but uh, it's tough to you know go ask the planners and stuff questions about these things when it hasn't came into fruition yet. But, uh, you know, we do have the treasure map of where all these things are going to be going. We've got the first and second draft. We're just waiting for it to be ratified uh, through the province. So uh, we're, we're getting ready and we're well learned on the subject, that's for sure. So I wanted to touch on what these minimum frontages are going to actually look like. So a detached home was in any one of those three zonings. So any zoning across Barrie, the minimum lot frontage is nine meters. That's 30 feet. 
So if you have a 60 foot lot, you can have two detached homes. Each detached home can have three units in there and your DCs will be minimized as well. We'll touch on that a little bit further. Semi-detached homes. They're actually seven meters and 7.5 meters, depending on which zone you're in. So again, that's 24 feet of width. If you have a 50 foot lot, you can cut it into two lots and create purpose-built tribe semi-triplexes on each side, as long as you can get your parking. Townhomes are six meters. Six meters, you can get, if you have a, a 60 foot lot, you can get three townhomes. Our townhome lots are worth almost $350,000 a piece in this area. So think about the opportunity of just severing up little townhouse sites. There's, the opportunities can be endless here in Barrie and with things the way things are going, interest rates saying they're coming down, it's gonna be crazy because the land that, that these people's houses are sitting on to present such an opportunity is gonna be worth more, but nobody knows this is happening, but we've got the treasure map to show you. So come let us know and we can help you out and if that's something that interests you. Here's a live opportunity that just sold in the Barry area last week. So this is on Spring Home Drive. It's in a great area. Uh, you know, Grandma's bungalow obviously needed work. This had a 65 by 135 foot lot. It sold for $652,000. This would have been 900 grand eight months ago. You could sever this into two detached lots for $400,000 a piece. So overnight, you're making a lot of money just on severing the land in half. Wow. So what would this look like? So the cost to build something, if you were to try and build semi-triplexes, or sorry, detached triplexes on each side, you're looking around $700,000 per, uh, these are just high level numbers, your development charge is cut in half because you're tearing a building down. You have your tear down, your servicing fees. Uh, again, your lot values are eight hundred thousand. You bought it for six fifty, so you're making one hundred fifty grand right off the hop. And our our ARVs we're projecting are around one point three five. We've got a couple of future value appraisals in this market coming in at that. And the estimated rents are about seventy five hundred dollars per building. Not to mention, if you have two brand new buildings side by side, you qualify for CMHC financing. This puts you in at 40 year amortizations, four and a quarter percent interest rates in this market today. If things continue down, the opportunity is only going to get better. Damn. <laughs> Damn. So what, is the, <laughs> what does the profit on a deal like this look like? This is a build and retain. You're going to have a $418,000 profit. You're going to own two brand new purpose-built triplexes in Barrie. And by the time we're done, it's probably going to be worth a heck of a lot more if they start bringing down these interest rates. That is wicked, man. I, I love seeing these live deals. And I know uh, if you're watching at home, like I know you're with me on this. This is exciting stuff. Like This is oh, what yeah. we come here for, right? This is what we want to hear about. This hasn't been touched in 20 years, this document. So just imagine 20 years of opportunity that hasn't been people haven't been picking it over. Like before people were severing lots, infill developments, but they were going off the rules from 20 years ago. Now it's gonna be a whole new ball game because everything's gonna be able to be denser. So all these infills are gonna be everywhere. It's not just gonna be in certain little pockets anymore. It's gonna be all across Barry. And we're, we've got all the drafts of all the documents of where this is happening. It's crazy. Well, and it's just again, like the greater the density, the greater your economies of scale, right? Because like adding an additional unit into an already bigger structure is so much more affordable than trying to squeeze in, you know, like one unit on a, a duplex or something and making it a triplex. Mm. If you can take that and make it six units, like your, your the efficiency of your capital is so much better. Yeah. So I, I'm really excited for all this. And something else to do, I just want to, I keep pushing, you know, smaller single family homes, uh, triplexing them or semi triplexes. I think that's going to be the lowest hanging fruit to maximize potential. And one of the biggest reasons why we're targeting those types of built forms is because of the development charges. So I know we talked about the NL2s and the Templex space. Now I just want you guys to take a look at what it would cost from a development charge perspective based on uh, an apartment building or semis and townhouses. So if you were to build a templex in the Barrie area, the city of Barrie charges you $62,000 per unit to create a templex. So just to be blessed with the right to connect to the city of Barrie services, you're gonna have to pay in addition to your building permit and your cost to build, the city of Barrie is gonna make you pay $372,000 in development charges to build a purpose-built templex, sorry, sixplex, sorry. 
Now, if you go with semi triplexes, there's only one development charge of 105,000. So you can get three units in that semi, and there's two sides of the semi. So your total cost to create six units for 200 is for 210,000. Where if you were to do six units uh, in an apartment style build, it would be 372,000. Now, if you look again, if you went for the templex, which I made a little mistake there before, you would be six hundred and twenty thousand dollars just in development charges to build a templex. If you were to do three detached homes at thirty foot lots, if you get your hands on a ninety foot lot, your development charges would be three hundred and thirty thousand. As a templex, it'd be six hundred and twenty thousand. So the smaller little infill developments, the way we're targeting them, you're saving hundreds of thousands of dollars on the development charges just to start. And it is the hardest thing to fund from a funding perspective as well. Awesome. Yeah, that's great insight. And that, that's it for today. And I really thank everyone for coming out. If you have any questions at all, give us a look us up at colbymarshall.ca and I will be happy to help you out. Yeah, there's going to be a lot of questions here. I can already tell the, the comment section is going to be thick. Um, I know that because I had a reaction. And if you can get me to react, uh, we know that the, uh, the people watching at home are going to be excited about this. So, guys, if you do have comments, please drop them. Continue the conversation. I love reading your comments. And I know that other people who are watching the video at the same time have the same question as you. So just ask it. There's no bad questions. There's no wrong questions. Uh, and I will answer to the best of my ability. But really, the best thing you can do is reach out to Colby. Right. Have a discussion with him and he can even keep you up to date right on what's live in the market right now. Right. Because that's what's important is being able to take these ideas, take this lesson, take this information and turn it into something useful that you can take action on. And that's what Colby's going to help you do uh, over there with his real estate team. So thank you guys so much. You got something else here, Colby? Yeah. One more thing. I should have uh, threw it in there a little earlier, but uh, the city of Barrie has also had talks in December. They had an open council meeting about having four units on any lot in the city of Barrie. We followed up uh, last week and uh, apparently it's not an if, it's a when, when we're going to have like four units per lot as well. I know we touched on that in the market update, but uh, something I want to keep in everyone's mind as well. So imagine four, four unit buildings opposed to three, the amount of density and opportunity there as well. But uh, we'll keep an eye on that and keep your abreast of that when that comes uh, to fruition as well. I love it. I love it. Thank, thank you so much, Colby, for the update today. It's really exciting. It's probably my favorite that we've had in a long time. So I appreciate that. And uh, thanks for tuning into the Canadian Real Estate Channel. Make sure you guys get subscribed because we're always doing these market update videos. We do them monthly. And you can also come hang out with me on Tuesdays where we do an Ask Me Anything and we kind of hang out more casually where it's a two-way street. And if you have more questions about Simcoe County in general, I am from Collingwood, so I can try and do my best. But again, I'll refer you back to Colby because he's the actual expert here, not freaking me. Okay, so reach out to his team. Let's get him some business. Let's do some business for you. Let's get you invested in Simcoe County. And uh, and if you do buy, I'll even buy you a coffee if you want to come see me here in Stainer at some point. So uh, no, you don't have to buy. But if you're in Simcoe County, reach out because I'd love to chat. And uh, thank you so much. And we'll see you back here on the Canadian Real Estate Channel soon. Cheers. Thanks for having me.